Jason. Uh, I work here at New Relic, and I'm here to talk to you today very briefly about something that we all interact with in Ruby on an almost daily basis, and that is bundled exec. Now, on my next slide, I have for you a diagram of how I feel like most people think about what happens when you bundle exec on a command in Ruby. It looks something like this. Okay. Sometimes you need it, sometimes you don't. What is even going on? What does this command do? Well, I'm here to break that down for you, give you a pretty simple answer about what's happening, because it's actually really easy to understand. Um, first off, though, I mean, we do this so often that I know multiple people that have this alias, BE, so that they can tack it onto the front of whatever command. And my first recommendation, this is like twice the effort that you need to go to. You know, the alias for this really ought to just be E. That extra E is just dragging you down. That's like double, double the work, double the typing every time you do this. But in all seriousness, what happens when you say bundle exec in the, a command that runs some Ruby code? Well, in effect, what uh, bundle exec is doing for us is these two lines of Ruby. It requires bundle setup, and then it calls bundler.require. So what do these two pieces do? What do these things uh, buy for us? We'll start with bundler setup. So in Ruby, when you say require a particular file, Ruby will go off and it looks at this local variable that's around called load path. And it looks for that portion of the path that you gave it in any of those locations in the load path. It's an array of strings, just locations on your disk. And the first one that matches that, it loads that file up and, and interprets it as Ruby for you. And so what bundle setup does is it looks at your gem file, and it takes those gems, and it puts those into the load path for us, so that all of those are available for us to be able to do a require. It also patches Ruby gems so that if you say require, the only things that it will find are in this load path. So it buys us a kind of a playground where we can require the code that we want at the time that we want to, and everything will get found just from within the scope of what's defined in that gem file for us. So, in effect, we can have a line here, we said gem, my gem, and our gem file. That means that then in our application code, because of bundle setup, we can say require my gem, and then it will find the right code for us, and everything's loaded, and everything's there. Now, that's only half of the story of what happens when you bundle exec, because you might notice that a lot of the time you don't end up doing that required. You don't require all of these separate gems that are in there, and that is what your bundler require line does. So bundler require then loops through the, the various gems that are listed in your gem file and calls require. Now this is exactly why if you're in Rails, especially, this is the common place where people see it, you don't end up doing that require, you just use the code that you want, because Bundler has already picked it up for you. And yes, it just works. So, when you bundle exec a command, this is what's going on behind the scenes for you. Basically setting up that environment so your Ruby code gets loaded from where you want it to. So, why haven't you seen this before? Well, if you haven't, it's probably because the frameworks that you're using are doing this on your behalf. Rails in particular, this is buried in its startup sequence. And so you never see this. All you do is you write your gem file, and then magically when everything starts up, all of these classes are already defined that you want to. But under the covers, it's just these two lines that are getting executed to pull all of that stuff in and set it up. So there's a little bit of a complication, though. A lot of times in a Ruby uh, application, you might start another process. And that other process, may, you may not say bundle exec, you may not have that uh, on the command line that you're going to start. And so Bundler actually does some things overriding how processes get started to help us out with that. So if, in effect, we had this particular line, so that's using backticks to create a brand new process that runs Ruby against another script, if this is run from within a place where Bundler is loaded, in effect, it does this for you. So the bundle gem file that it adds to that environment makes sure that it works with the same gem file that we're using here. So even if that script is in some other directory or some other location, it will find the same gem file that our current Ruby process is loaded. And then it passes this Ruby ops and says minus r bundler slash setup. 
And you may or may not have seen that, but the minus R is a, a flag that you can pass to Ruby to say require the remainder of that path. So this is basically just doing that bundle setup the same way that we saw the bundle exec was doing for us. And by setting, setting it into the Ruby ops, any Ruby process that runs will do that required for us and end up with the same environment that we were looking for. So even if you spawn some processes and shell out to things, they will end up with exactly the same set of gems available and loaded for you that you had before. So maybe that's not what you want. And if it's not, then Bundler provides you with an escape hatch. You can say with clean in, and any shell that's executed in there doesn't get any of that special loading. So sometimes this is pertinent if you've got things that need to load a separate gem file or run from some other context. That's all I have. Hopefully Bundle Exec is a little less mysterious to you. Thank you.